Hey, hey everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. Today we are looking at the Home app and just HomeKit in general across all of Apple's platforms. We are seeing stuff in iOS, tvOS, macOS, Big Sur, and really just all the changes that Apple has made this year from their developer conference. So let's go ahead and start off and check out everything coming new to HomeKit this year across all of Apple's platforms. Now we didn't get any new big accessory categories or anything like that, but we definitely got stuff worth talking about. Inside of the actual home app, they've redesigned it a little bit. There's a few different changes that we'll notice throughout the app, but the biggest thing is the status bar along the top. It gives you really a high level view of each room that you're in or the home in general. Things like which doors are open, what the temperature is, air quality, uh, the windows open, basically anything that you need to know right out of the gate. Lights are getting a big new feature called adaptive lighting. Essentially what is going on here is throughout the day, the lights will change their hue. So you're gonna wake up in the morning, it'll be nice and warm, kind of wake you up. It'll turn cooler in the middle of the day, really getting you focused, and then warming down at night, again, taking those blues out, helping you get ready for bed. So that'll work with any home kit lights that support that color spectrum. Now, whether you're adding a new accessory or looking at an existing accessory, there are all of these suggested automations, all these different ones based on what that device is and what it may or may not want to do. So for this case, we're looking at a light, maybe it wants to turn on when that camera in that room detects motion, or when the living room opens a certain amount, turn these lights on. I really like that one. Uh, it can automatically turn off when the last person leaves, turn on when the living room door unlocks, all these different suggested ideas for those lights. And it changes based on what we're looking at. So if we look at the window, maybe this will close when that last person leaves. Again, I like that idea. Uh, the front door, maybe that's a door lock. So in this case, it's going to suggest that when the last person leaves, it locks, turn on the lights when it's unlocked, and unlock when the first person arrives. All great ideas for these accessories, and I love how they're giving you those suggestions right as you set up, up to make that whole setup process easy. It is a great way to get people more used to automating their lights and not just manually controlling them. We have a ton of new features here for HomeKit secure video cameras as well. When we jump into the settings and scroll down, you notice two new additions for us to check out. First is this select activity zones. That is right, with HomeKit secure video cameras, you can add zones. That way you don't get a bunch of motion from other things going on. A great example is with doorbell cameras. It may be uh, you have just the motion detect on your sidewalk on your porch, but your road is excluded. So that's a great way just to get you know, notifications for something that's happening right on your porch and not letting other things inadvertently send off your cameras. And you can even add multiple zones as well. They're easy to add just from within those camera settings. The next new feature to check out is facial recognition. Now this is incredibly intelligent how Apple is pulling this off, but you go into settings and you can turn this right on and it's going to start recognizing faces. But where is it gonna get those faces? It's actually using your photos library. That's right, any photos that you've named or assigned in the photos app, it'll use those to recognize those faces throughout your home, sending you notifications when someone you know is at your front door or in your house. Even better, the HomePod can even announce when someone's there. So maybe it sees and goes, hey, your wife is at the front door or whoever is at the front door. It'll be able to give you a name because it knows them from your photos library. Also with cameras, we're getting notifications when they go offline and once again come back online. So in this case, my circle view has become unreachable for whatever reason, and you can see it inside of the app. First off, you'll also notice that new talk button as well. But if we scroll back in the timeline, we actually have notifications and markers here for when the camera goes offline as well as when it came back online. So it's really easy to see when stuff goes online, when back online, and whether that was just some random accident, whether something was going on, or whatever reason it may be, you can at least see that that happened inside of the app. Next, we're gonna open up Control Center. Now you've always been able to add your favorites to Control Center, but this year it's getting even better. You'll now notice a bunch of suggested accessories shown up here in Control Center, like my studio twinkle lights, the living room mantle, my front door, or the fireplace. And why those? Well, my phone knows me, and it knows those are the ones that I control most often. It also has my most used scene, which is good night, and I still have access to all of my favorites here, just like I did before. Open that up, I have my favorited scenes and favorite accessories that I all get to very quickly without having to open the home app or anything else. AirPlay 2 is actually part of HomeKit. You can get HomeKit enabled TVs and speakers that work with AirPlay 2. And with iOS 14, this is getting better for one big reason, and that's the ability to share these up to your Apple TVs in much higher resolution. So now when you go into screen sharing from the Photos app, and I wanna throw up a 4K video 
onto my 4K Apple TV. With my 4K TV, I can stream that video in 4K. So before this was downsampled a little bit, you weren't getting as full quality when you stream those over AirPlay 2, but now you do. Looking at the Apple TV, since we're already here, you'll notice a few things new. Inside that side menu, that control center, you now have access to your home, at least some areas of your home. You have preview shots of all of your cameras here along the top. Then going down, we have all these various scenes, so all my favorite scenes that I want to have access to, all of those are right there. But that's really it, so there's not still a full home app for the Apple TV, but it's definitely a step forward. You can open up any of those cameras into full screen and see them on your TV, and even better, just like how the HomePod would announce when someone's at your front door, the Apple TV will do the same. When someone rings your HomeKit doorbell or is seen on your cameras, it'll show up here on your Apple TV with a little notification in that top right hand corner. And you can use Siri to access those cameras as well, so I want to say, show me my living room camera, show me the Arlo Ultra, whatever it may be, it'll go ahead and pull up that camera right there in the corner, and then I can make that full screen and get a great picture. So we've looked at iOS, which also applies to iPadOS at the same time. We've looked at our Apple TV and the changes there. The last one that we want to check out is the Mac. So the Mac, the first huge feature here is actually Catalyst. So Catalyst, which is Apple's way of porting iPad apps to the Mac, now works with HomeKit. So we're soon going to be able to see great HomeKit apps on our Mac. Right here, we're looking at a very, very early build of Aaron Pierce's home cam, and it's running right here on my Mac. I can get easy access to all of my cameras, jump into accessories, scenes. I am so excited for macOS Big Sur to be released, and Aaron Pierce to finish his work on home cam and any other apps that he plans to bring to the Mac. This has long been a sore spot for me, not being able to really control my HomeKit devices from my Mac, so I cannot wait to see what Aaron and other developers do to make the Mac feel part of that HomeKit ecosystem. The Home app did receive a little bit of an update on its own, has a new full height sidebar, a little bit of a revamp, of course it has access to all those secure video features that we looked at already, and that new status bar along the top. So that is it, those are the big changes here with HomeKit in iOS 14, macOS Big Sur, iPadOS 14, and tvOS 14. We've got a bunch of changes to HomeKit secure video, including facial recognition and those zones. We have revamped apps across all the platforms, new support on Apple TV, and of course, Mac apps are finally going to be realized. Let me know what you guys think over on Twitter with the hashtag HomeKitInsider, because I am so excited to talk more about all these new improvements to HomeKit. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.